Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the next video in the restoration series for this Philips B7X 14A. And we've done a hell of a lot of uh, work on this radio. A lot of uh, procrastination has happened and we still don't know whether the radio works. And that's on purpose. It's not to create suspense for you. It's actually something that I enjoy. I, I, I like flipping things around a bit. And sometimes this sort of procrastination just builds up the suspense for me as well. And it builds up to a very exciting stage. Now, bear in mind, everything that's been done so far has been necessary, absolutely necessary. Without a power supply, you don't have a radio. Without an audio section, you don't have audio, even though the power supply might be working and the radio might be working. So everything is done with a certain logic behind it. But getting to the point where we are actually what is four videos into this series and I haven't even tested the radio, that might be called procrastination. It could be called foreplay if you want to get risque. It's just the way I like to do things. And this is what we're going to tackle now. This is the radio test, the AM section first followed later on, but later on, I don't know how much later on, depends on what I find on the AM section by the FM section. So that's where we are. And I'll be honest with you, when I first started these restorations, the first thing I wanted to check was whether the thing would work. I mean, if it wasn't working at all, then I used to think that perhaps my abilities wouldn't allow me to get this thing operational. It was a little bit daunting because it, you know, I didn't want to start a series not knowing that I was going to complete it. It's a bit risky. I don't film the entire series and then publish it. When I start filming the series, I don't know what's going to happen. And that comes from experience, I suppose, and a bit of confidence. Initially, I wasn't sure that I was going to get it finished. And, and I didn't want you guys to stand there going through four videos and come to the fifth one. And I say, guys, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I can't get it working. I'm confident that I can get it working. And, and I'm confident that if I can't, you'll agree with me that it's a reasonable uh, surrender if I have to ever do that. So this is why I, I do these things as I do them. You know, I, uh, this is a hobby. I enjoy the entire process. I enjoy even, believe it or not, the cleaning, which is now completed on this radio, as you may see as we start showing you bits of it. Even the cleaning, especially on a radio like this that was so dirty, when you clean it and you see the, 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 the clean part coming through, it's, it's very, very satisfying. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a weird thing, but that's what I suffer from and I can't get away from it. So anyway, AM reception, we're going to test it now. We're going to see what we need to do. Enough procrastination, enough foreplay. Let's get down to it. Enjoy the video. But before we carry on, I just want to thank the sponsors of this video. That's PCB Way. If you visit their website, you'll get all the information and all the services they provide from the simplest PCBs, which is what I normally use to all the advanced PCBs you can wish for. Furthermore, if your project requires it, you can get prototyping done, you can get assembly done, you can have CNC machining done and also 3D printing. So your project can go from your design all the way through to a finished project. And just as with the PCBs, with all these services, you can get instant quotes online for whatever it is you want to do. Visit them and see what they can do for you. Well, there's no time like the present. So firstly, Tube sockets got cleaned out with a little, um, it's a dental tool that you use for cleaning between your teeth. A bit of uh, contact cleaner in there. Clean out all the contacts, every hole. And um, the actual pins get cleaned with a copper brush. And then that gets put in. So we put in our uh, first tube. This one is the EF89. Then we go on to the uh, what is it, the EBF80, and then finally the ECH81, which is a mixed oscillator. So that is in. Those are the three tubes that I've had to put in, other than the ones that were dealing with the audio. Next, plug in the uh, radio to the dim bulb tester. As you'll see, this is a new plug and new wire. I've uh, changed the uh, two-wire cord for a three-wire cord, so I've got the ground, the earth, connected to the chassis. And then, of course, plug in my trusty mini whip antenna, switch it on. This is perfect for shortwave, medium wave, and long wave. And plug that into the AM antenna socket at the back. 
So, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's hit it. What is this? This is off. This is PA or TA. That is, I believe, long wave. Put the volume on max and give it a bit of time. Oh. Nothing. That's not good. Those light bulbs are pretty bright. I wonder if I give it another bulb. If it'll make any difference. Hmm, no. Something is wrong. What could it be? Did I get the tubes right? Oh, you idiot. See how stupid mistakes are made? I put the EBF 89, EBF 89, yep, in the place of the EF 89. No wonder it didn't work. I hope I haven't done any more damage. But this is just to show you how stupid mistakes are made. Yeah, this is the channel where you see stupid mistakes. Actually, that's a good name for a channel. The stupid mistake channel. How to avoid them. Learn from this guy. Okay, let's try that again. Hopefully, no damage. Long wave. Yes, something at least. Ah, brilliant. This is from the Canary Islands. We've only got one local AM station. That was that music one down here. So this is pretty good. Let's try a short wave. Connect speech. Whoa, that sounds terrible. Okay. That I'm 
he's he's like I don't like I don't know maybe he doesn't like the water on the East Coast and he certainly doesn't like water anywhere else in the world and when these two are out this is hi-fi this is speech you get control of your tone uh, tone knobs okay so short waves fine medium waves fine what's wrong with long wave Well, that is brilliant. I want to try that um, reverb now. Ah. That sounds, actually sounds quite good. Looks like somebody's uh, speaking in a hall. The idea is that you can um, use the balance control to get more or less reverb because reverb is only coming out of the one side. That's no reverb or very little. That's full reverb. That's in the middle. Okay, that's good. This is actually quite good reception. Okay, so what have we learned here? Don't follow Manuel's example and get the tubes mixed up. Bad things can happen. Fortunately, nothing did, so I was lucky. But it does happen. Those tubes all, um, they look very similar. They've got the same basis, so they fit in most, um, in any of them. So, um, yeah, okay. I thought I'd never do that again, but I guess I'll do it again sometime. What have we got? We've got AM. We've got AM, and it's actually pretty good, which means that the three tubes that uh, are responsible for this, the ECH81, the EF89, and the EBF89, seem to be fine, even after that little zap that they got there. So, um, I think I'm going to have a quick look at the alignment, see what that's like. And uh, I don't have alignment instructions for this. On the service manual, which is quite complete, it does not come with alignment instructions. I think, I think, the alignment instructions for the uh, B, what is it, B4X23A, the previous one I did, I think it'll be pretty similar, so if I do need to do them, I'll be able to do them with, uh, with, with those instructions. If you know what you're doing, you know what to, what to uh, adjust. So yeah, this is a bit of thinking that needs doing right now, and um, let me do that. Well, folks, we have a dilemma here. I said I was going to look at the IF, and I started looking at the IF. Now, the IF for this thing is 452 kilohertz. And what I did was, I was going to check the peaking on this. It's very simple. There are only four adjustments to make. You feed a signal, 452 kilohertz, with a modulated tone from the signal generator, you know, through the uh, attenuator switcher to get the right amplitude. And I fed it into the um, grid one of the, or the grid of the ECH81. And then you measure or hear the output. And yes, we can hear it, okay? But um, I found it was very low. So what I did is I started changing the frequency and I found something interesting. This thing is not peaked to 452. Let me show you what it is peaked to. I decided to sweep the, um, the IF. So I got the signal generator. I centered it on 452 and I've given it a span of uh, 28 kilohertz. So, you know, 14 one way, 14 the other way. So the sweep starts at um, 14 kilohertz below 452 and it stops at 14 kilohertz above 452. And you can see, if you detect it at the right place, which is just uh, really by the diode, well, you know, the EC EBF89 has got a diode, it detects it. So you go through the coil and you detect it on the other side and you can get the peak. And I will show you that in a second. The problem is I don't get it peaking at 452. Let me show you where I do get it.
I'll switch on the sweep. And this is what we get. Now, what we see here is this thing right in the center of the screen will be 452. And that means that uh, for each uh, graticule, each uh, mark to the left and right is two kilohertz. This thing is speaking at two, four, six, eight. This thing is speaking at 460 and it's it's sort of pretty well peaked at 460. So someone set this up to peak at 460 kilohertz. Now, I don't know whether that was intentional or not. I can tell you the, uh, the markings on there, the, the uh, seals on those um, IF transformers were still intact. In other words, nobody messed with that. So this thing looks like it was peaked originally at the factory for 460 kilohertz. Now, nothing wrong with that. The only thing that you need to do is adjust the uh, RF alignment so that it corresponds to the to the marks on the on what you see on the dial. But the difference is eight kilohertz. Now, I don't know why they did that. And I'm wondering whether I shouldn't leave it at that, because look, if I take this uh, sweep and I now center it instead of 452, I center it on 460. It's pretty close. I mean, it's not a perfect bell curve, but it's pretty close. And I can probably adjust that and make it a perfect bell curve, but I'm not sure I want to do that. I think I want to I want to set it for 452. Let me turn this guy around without shorting anything or doing something stupid like, you know, get coils, uh, tubes the wrong way around. And I'm going to try and adjust this see how adjustable it is. Now what I've done is I've already uh, broken the seals on those uh, IF transformers. It's the ones that, that are painted red. Let's see if I can see this. Yeah, it's certainly moving. The other one. That's going up a lot. So I can peak it. It was sort of there. Well, there. This thing is not adjusted or peaked at all. Let me set this up. I'm going to set it up for 452 and I'm going to peak it and show you the results. I want to turn this thing around a bit because I don't want to get zapped. Okay, I think this is now a bit more accessible. You can see what I'm doing. I've still got that thing on 460 centered, 28 kilohertz uh, spread. I'm going to change that. Let me show you. Okay, here we go. That is still on 460. I'm going to set it at 452. And you see it's shifted. Now I'm going to try and adjust this to get them back in line. This takes a bit of exercise because you need to literally shift all of them, make sure they're moving in the right direction. Now, what I'm worried about is that this may not be peakable at 460. Okay, now remember the center is now 452. I'm going to decrease the signal amplitude. Not that much, okay. And we just keep going backwards and forwards. It's sort of heading the right direction, but then it meets a cut from one of the other coils. Now 
you're watching this live, so... It takes longer than when you edit this thing. Okay, that's looking better. Let's see what else I can do. Is this okay? I'm going to change the span to 14 kilohertz now. That makes it a little bit better, and I'm going to just reduce the amplitude here a little bit more. Just on the vertical scale, what am I doing? Okay. This one's very, very sensitive. See, I could make it flatter so I get more bandwidth, but really what I've found with these radios the bandwidth's good enough. I just want peak because I want this thing to be as sensitive and selective as possible. We're getting there, we're getting there. Takes a lot of patience. That, I think, is as good as it's going to get. Okay. Now, if I take this span and I make it 28 now, you see a very, very nice looking bell curve. Very, very nice. Let's make it, what is it, 7 kilohertz? That'll be too round. But um, you get the idea. We've now got this thing 
perfectly IF aligned VAM to 452 kilohertz, which is where it's supposed to be. And I'm actually curious to see what um, this thing sounds like. Now remember, these are the four. One, two, three, four. Now these are uh, obviously not in the instructions over there, but these are the same as <laughs> all the others, and you can see it on the schematic. So that's, uh, that's what you do. And I'm good to try out and see what reception's like. Now this is uh, mid-morning, late morning. So on AM, not the best time to test, but we'll do it anyway. Right, so once again, I've got the mini whip in, medium wave selected. Can't play music. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's see if there's anything on long wave at this time of the morning. I don't think so. Oh, we do. A lot of noise. Short wave. Now short wave this time of the morning. This is six megahertz. It'll be up on that end. I honestly did not expect anything. Now what I want to do I want to check the RF alignment. Now, because I've changed the IF, theoretically, the RF alignment will be out by, well, eight, what is it, eight kilohertz, right? So let's put it on one megahertz on medium wave. And I will connect the antenna. Instead of coming from the mini whip, it's now going to come from the signal generator. And I'll set the signal generator to one megahertz with the modulated tone on it. And we'll see what we get, see where it is. Well, I can hear it already. <laughs> that is perfectly aligned to one megahertz. Let's try 550 at the bottom end. So change the signal generator to 550. Bloody hell, it's right on that dot. Try 1.5. Jeez, this is accurate. You probably don't see it as well as I do because of the parallax and the angle, but this is exactly on 1.5 megahertz. Try it on shortwave. Let's try, it's on 17 megahertz there. So I'm putting the signal generator to 17, 17 megahertz. It's slightly out, it's slightly out. Let's try the bottom end, seven megahertz. Same distance to the left. So slightly out as well. Okay, well, let's try 240 kilohertz on long wave. Oh, that's so wide, I can't tell, but it's slightly off to the right there. So this may well need a bit of a RF alignment, and I'm not sure how to do that right now. I have to check the, the instructions again. And once again, I think the instructions will tell me that uh, it's exactly the same way to do this uh, RF alignment will be exactly the same as doing the RF alignment for the 14, uh, what is it, the 23A that I did, probably the same as the uh, 43A, B7X, 
So although this doesn't have actual alignment instructions for this model, I can get that information and sort of extrapolate looking at the schematic to this model. So I'm going to think of doing that, but um, and then I've obviously got to look at the FM. I'm not even sure that it's working yet, but <laughs> suspense is great. As you've seen, uh, I have cleaned the front panel and this is what's amazing. Look at this dial. Look at this dial. This dial looks beautiful. Now, if I switch off the lights, you'll see what I mean. Uh, this thing is amazing. Look at that dial. This is the way I did it with those uh, two LEDs. I made no changes to that. The changes I did make are I painted the back, spray painted the back and the top and bottom edges, obviously not the side ones, with white spray paint. Okay, I just covered the, 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 uh, the two edges I didn't want in the front and I spray painted the back. And this is what it looks like. Now, if the original looked better than this, I'd like to see it. I've never seen one of these uh, retro luminescent, whatever it's called, displays, but this thing looks amazing, <laughs> amazing. And actually, when I saw this uh, with the dial on, because I hadn't seen it with the dial on, I started wondering what it would look like if I had blue on there or orange. Anyway, that's a rather stupid idea. It's just uh, coming out of my mouth without going through my brain. So, yeah, this is where we are. We've got our um, AM IF alignment done. We've got a little bit of possibly a little bit of RF alignment to do. I'm going to think about that and uh, look at the instructions, look at the... I'm going to look at the cores on those transformers, which are usually a little bit scary. So what I'm going to do is uh, cut for now, do a bit more study, come back to you when I've uh, decided what I'm going to do next. Once again, I want to thank you for your company. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.